You're listening to the Packernet Podcast Network. Wyndham Hotels and Resorts makes travel possible for all. Whether it's the long haulers looking for a great cup of coffee, a roomier rest for the on a whim road trippers, or a place to make summer memories with the whole family. No matter who you are, where you're going, or why, with 24 trusted brands to choose from like La Quinta, Days In, and Super 8, your Wyndham is waiting. Get the lowest price at WyndhamHotels.com. Restrictions apply. Visit website for more details. Why take one vacation with the family when you could take all of them? With Royal Caribbean, you don't just go to the beach. You visit a private island and race down the tallest water slide in North America. You don't just go for a road trip. You ATV and zip line through the jungle. You don't just go somewhere new. You rappel down waterfalls and discover ancient temples. Because this isn't just any vacation. This is all the vacations. Come seek the Royal Caribbean. Ships Registry, Bahamas. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome once again to the Packer Net Podcast. I am your host and resident panelist, as always, Ryan Schlipp. Check us out online, packernet.com. Find me on Twitter, pack underscore data. Boy, oh boy, today is going to be an interesting day. Um, probably could have got this out to you yesterday, but the podcast was done by the time I found this. We have, believe it or not, and um, nobody's really talking about this because everybody believes there's been 7,000 reports about the Green Bay Packers. There have not. To date, there has been one, one actual report about the Green Bay Packers and Aaron Rodgers situation. One time this entire year has anybody claimed to have inside knowledge with either Aaron Rodgers or the Green Bay Packers. And that person is Bob McGinn. And boy, oh boy, is it a doozy. Um, I can't say I've ever seen anything like this ever. And you could say, well, no, no, we've seen it with this and that. No, 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 no. Every other time we've seen these types of reports, including by Bob McGinn, there have been claims made that are difficult to falsify. In fact, even if you look at, and we'll get to what Bob McGinn said, but even if you look at, you know, a lot of people are discrediting Bob and saying, yeah, well, look what he said back in 2021. He said Rodgers was talking trash about Gutekunst and refused to come back as long as Gut was here. Technically, that could still be true. It's possible that he told people that, first of all, it's entirely possible he was trashing Gut. We don't know if that was true or not. Um, And again, even if Rodgers comes out and says that's not true, it still could be, right? There, there's still a level of, um, to, you know, potential uh, wiggle room in terms of believing, choosing to believe him. And that it's the same with saying he wouldn't be back. It's entirely possible he said it. I mean, he did hold out. He did refuse to come back to Green Bay. He did trash the Green Bay Packers for an entire offseason, and particularly the organization and the people running it, for a very long time. It's not that hard to believe that he had made some kind of a comment regarding Brian Gutekunst and saying, I don't want to play for that guy. He flat out said, I mean, every time they talk, what do they talk about? How things got better. How they've improved. Roger's talking about his relationship with Gutekunst, right? He's taken strides. He's done these things to improve his relationship with me, blah, blah, blah. So it's entirely possible he said he wasn't going to come back. And Gutekunst, remember, they were flying out to California to meet with him and talk to him and try to patch things up. And then Rodgers did ultimately decide to come back. So it's possible that that was true. You go back to the um, the, the earlier reports about Aaron Rodgers and things that were going on in the locker room. And again, you could have some people come out and say, that's not true. Well, maybe it is true and you just missed it. Or maybe you're lying to protect your friend or whatever the case may be. There's always these things, you know, Tyler Dunn is the guy that wrote that. His name is sitting right in front of me right now. Um, there's always kind of a way to wiggle your way out of it and and to form factions of whether or not these people lied or are telling the truth. And of course, both sides believe that they know 100%, right? We know for a fact, based on reports, Rodgers did these things. We know for a fact 
that Tyler Dunn is a liar because one player spoke out and was like, no, that's not true. Rodgers would never do that, despite the fact that the report is based on the reports of other players. So that's always been kind of the way things have gone. And you can look back and say he was... um, Because let's be even more specific about that report. Did Bob McGinn say, I know for a fact he won't be back because? Which there's still wiggle room with that. Or did he say Rodgers made these comments? You see what I'm saying? On one hand, you can be wrong. And then you can still come back and say, okay, I was wrong, but he did say it. But with this, he's not even necessarily wrong. It's a question of did he say it or did he not? People say things all the time that they end up changing their mind about, especially if they're angry or emotional or whatever. You could have said it in an outburst of anger and that got reported to McGinn, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? Anyways, uh, again, I've never seen anything like this because there is zero wiggle room here. I mean, it's possible that something happens in which we don't get closure on whether or not this is true. And that would be if, you know... um, if Rodgers were to retire or to get traded, then, you know, you could have McGinn saying it's true and everybody saying, no, you don't know what you're talking about. You're an idiot. But there is a very obvious situation in which McGinn made a very, very, very pointed and specific um, statement that could very easily be proven not true. So... I could read it, but I'm just going to play this audio for you. Um, And I will say, one of the things that kind of makes you question things is it's very obvious McGinn doesn't like Rodgers. Now, granted, he's just reporting what other people are saying, but you can just hear in the tone of his voice, he cannot stand the guy. And that automatically makes you think like, eh, I don't know. So I'm just going to let this run for a little bit, all right? Just so we can kind of get the full depth and breadth and width emphasizing all the D's in those words of what's going on. All right. Um, well, just McGinn. As of right now, Tyler, I mean, I'm convinced based on my own instincts and knowing the NFL and knowing what, what happens after all these defeats and discussions with someone who just firsthand knowledge of this organization of the Packers uh, internal debates. That last part, by the way, is the most important part, because if he didn't add that, then this would all be useless. And, and maybe 90% of this is coming from the first parts and not necessarily the last parts, right? Somebody who has inside knowledge, well, who and how much inside knowledge? But again, he's saying there is inside knowledge, number one, and two, the specificity of what he's hearing, not so much his own personal beliefs of how things generally go, right? Just to be clear. That they are done with Rodgers. That that's the way it is right now, that he's not coming back. I mean, they're disgusted with him, and they're done with him, and they're moving on. And, you know, we're, this is going to involve money and a trade partner and all kinds of things, but... I'm totally convinced he will not be the starting quarterback this year. On the other hand, they love Jordan Love. They think he is the second coming now. They have seen enough in practice for three years that they believe he is like Rodgers 2.0. That's where this organization is coming from right now. They have turned the page. Just like they did to Favre in uh, June and July, those months there, the summer of 2008, and I don't see it change. I mean, even if Rodgers comes back to collect that 59, 59 million, I think he's the backup. All right. Um, <laughs> so, look. Again, he did say, I think he's the backup, and he's going to continue to talk about things in very specific terms, and it is hard to know how much is you speculating based on your knowledge of specific things that you've heard or how much of it is based on your just own personal feelings based on what you've observed, but he's putting it all out there, right? He's putting actual specific things in place to verify or falsify his views. Saying that he said this thing 
even if he comes back, it doesn't mean he didn't say it. What happens if Rodgers comes back and plays for the Packers? McGinn's full of crap. And not just based on, well, I thought he would be the backup. Everything he says about the team is done with him. They're disgusted with him. They think, by the way, they think Jordan is the second coming. And I we thrown this up in the Discord and JJ had asked a, or kind of asked a pretty good question. And that is, if he's the second coming and Brian Gutekunst got in front or Lafleur, whoever it was that said it, got in front of the press and said, we're going to put on the field the person that we think gives us the best chance. Wouldn't that be Jordan Love? If you're watching Aaron Rodgers play poorly, and you think Jordan is the next coming? I mean, I guess that means you just flat out lied and you don't actually want to put the best player out on the field. But there's already, when you start to look at this, a lot of questions and a lot of holes. But again, why would you be so specific? It seems crazy to me. The only other thing that would make sense is McGinn is angry and venting and just doesn't care. And you know how you get sort of this, um, you're convinced of things that uh, support your own biases. You know, like during election time, people on one side are convinced that nobody would ever vote for that other psycho on the other side, and people on the other side think that nobody would ever vote for that incompetent uh, moron on the other side, and turns out half the country actually supports them, and it's like, how could this happen? It's entirely possible McGinn has some deep-seated feelings about Aaron Rodgers and feels that there's no way that the team could actually want him to be their quarterback. I don't know, but let's continue. And he can try to, you know, he could try to ruin the whole operation. I'm sure he would, but he knows that's not going to happen and he's going to accept a trade somewhere. See what I mean? That's, it's little comments like that that make you go, eh, I'm sure he would. In other words, McGinn is convinced that he would come back just to ruin the organization. That's kind of a crazy accusation, don't you think? Um, He knows he can't live with that and the Packers fans and everybody it's love's turn. The organization's going that way, and that's the way it is. And they are, they're so done with, and this is, this is everybody, I'm told. This is Murphy. This is Le- There you go. I'm told, he says, right? I'm told. Lord, this is Gutekunst. This is the whole shooting match. That they are, they've turned the page, and uh, they don't see Rodgers as a guy who's really working hard anymore. Um. They see a guy who, when he reported this year, his body wasn't as so-called tight and strong. So-called, meaning this is what somebody told him. He showed up and he was, his body wasn't in shape. As long as it was, um, they see a guy who's, you know, blew off the offseason last year. And they can, all this gobbly gook about what they say in pressers, but that just infuriated them. And um, they're done. And it's a hard guy to be done with, but. Because I guess another question would be, why did they give him the contract that they did if they were done? Why wouldn't they have been done with him before, after all the antics that he pulled during that entire offseason? That would have been a really easy time to say, we're done with all your antics and all your nonsense and all your whining and complaining. We got Jordan Love. We like the guy. We're moving on. We're not giving you this massive, massive, massive contract. We already know he doesn't do offseason stuff. What sense does it make to give him that contract and then after just one more year of it saying we're done? The only other thing would be the level of play. While he's an MVP quarterback, we can't get rid of him. But now that the play dropped off, we have the excuse. But it's it's flimsy at best, in my opinion. Because he's going to be on McAfee and do all this stuff and undermine the organization as best he can because he doesn't care. But they're moving on, and that's the way it is. And we can talk about love. From my standpoint, I still haven't seen in, seen enough to insinuate he's going to be uh, Eric Kramer 2.0, let alone Aaron Rodgers 2.0. I just don't know which way it's going to go. But they've seen every day in practice for three full years, and they're going with the guy. So again, this is where it also gets weird because it's not – Again, he's saying some of this is based on what I've seen. He's not basing his idea that the Packers love love on the fact that he's seen him. He knows he's great, therefore. He's saying, I don't see it, but I know the Packers like the guy. Now, maybe that's based on how, but but there's nothing that the organization has done that would give him that impression. So I, I'm left to assume that it's what he's been told. Because there's there's no information to show. If anything, it looks like they can't stand the guy. They refuse to play him even when the chips are down, right? So what else is left? 
and it's time and they're not going to mess around. And this is, he's entering his fourth year. Aaron Rodgers was entering his fourth year in 08. He won six and 10 that first year. But in his third year as a starter, he won the Super Bowl in his uh, finest hour, his one moment of glory. And so they think, uh, you know, Gutekunst drafted Love, and it's time. And he's never going to turn his back. He's never trading Love. He's never not going to re-sign Love. He wants to see this guy, and he's got an ego, no doubt. And, well, he should. He wants to see us, the man he handpicked, and so that's the way it is. And how with the money and the trade and all that, all that's going to be seen in the next month. But And by the way, that's another thing. He's never not going to re-sign Love. So he's got a fifth-year option decision to make pretty soon. If he doesn't sign that, then he's wrong. And you could say, well, you could still re-sign him later. Right, but if, if he knows 1,000% he's not going to get rid of him, you sign that 100 times out of 100. The only reason you don't is because you're not sure if you want to keep him. That's the only reason. So... I mean, again, there's a lot of little tripwires here all over the place he's setting for himself. And if this is just based on his anger and bias toward Rodgers and he's just spouting off at the mouth, he's going to completely tank his entire reputation. And I know it's already low because a lot of people think he's full of it. But again, it's hard to really nail down times when people said things directly that, I mean, even if you look up other people, you know, I I, I saw um, Jason Lockenfora, who has a pretty terrible reputation as an insider, if you look up a lot of the things that he got wrong, um, there's technically a possibility that some of these things were happening, right? They were discussions. Well, you don't, just because it didn't materialize doesn't mean that there weren't discussions. And it could have been all the way down to the wire and maybe it was just about to get done. I mean, probably not. But again, it's really hard to know for sure. So this is, again, just laying it all on the line. And if Rodgers comes back and he's like, I want to play for the Packers, and the Packers are like, all right, dope, and he's the starter, McGinn is, his, his reputation goes to zero. And whatever remaining sources he has in Green Bay mean nothing. He's no longer a reliable source whatsoever. My guess is Favre got a third-round pick in 2008 from the Jets, right? That's what they got. They got a third in 2008, three. And uh, can this guy get a one? Maybe. Can he get a two? Probably. Can he get a three? Yes. But it's not the haul you pushed for a year ago, is it, Tyler? So that's about all I got as an intro, T. So there you go. That is the uh, the meat of it. This is, again, the wildest thing I think I've ever seen because it's so unbelievably specific, and it flies in the face. I mean, I just got done recording a podcast yesterday saying I think he's staying based on everything that everybody has said. And again, that doesn't mean that just because they said it, it's real, but the only thing I can do is assume that everything I've heard is opposite day, right? The Packers say they, you know, Lafleur says he loves Rodgers, they'd be crazy not to get, and such specific language too. They don't use coach speak to be like, well, well, we got to have some discussions. And No, they flat out are like, no, he's amazing. He's elite. We don't think he's lost a single thing. There were certain circumstances that took place. We got to do a better job as coaches and as whatever to surround him with talent. I mean, they're extremely specific in their language about Rodgers is great. We want to keep him. And we can interject conspiracy theories about they're saying that to up his value because they're going to trade him. Maybe. But again, aside from things that we make up in our own minds, the answer is right there. So McGinn is just throwing this um, bomb in the middle of all of it, telling us that he has inside information that the organization can't stand. And again, there's so many reasons this doesn't make sense to me. You are obsessed with love. You can't stand Rodgers. Rodgers was a complete D-bag like a year ago or two years ago now or however long that was. And then you decided to give him a massive contract that really puts your salary cap into a bind, despite the fact that you can't stand him. But this year you can't stand him, and you're definitely trading him. Like I, I, I don't, I don't get it. I mean, again, it's possible that they didn't really like Jordan Love at the time because he didn't really turn the corner yet. And again, you got MVP Rodgers, but now you got Rodgers not at MVP level, and maybe Jordan Love now they view differently as this guy's really got it now. So now things are different. Okay, fine. But all this is just, uh, it's pretty wild. And maybe he's banking on just assuming that he won't get caught up. 
right? He feels comfortable enough that the team is is done with him, that the odds are either he's going to be retired or traded. It's unlikely that he's going to come back. I, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe this is just a high-risk gamble, but very rarely do we see anything like this. And you know what's really crazy? This is the only report we've received this entire time, and it's not that big of a... Nobody's really talking about it. The only time people talk about it is like, yeah, this guy's an idiot, nobody cares. Right, but it's actual information. Everything else is just speculation based on what people think. I don't know, I think maybe they would do this. Bob McGinn's saying, I talk to people on the inside, and they're telling me that everybody is sick and tired of this guy, and that they love Jordan Love. Even if he's wrong about his opinion on how that data... uh, that information materializes. The fact that every level of this organization is disgusted with Rodgers and that they're obsessed with Jordan Love and think that he's Aaron Rodgers 2.0, even if that's what he's hearing and he's wrong about how that materializes, that's major news. And again, I'm not going to take it so lightly as to assume, oh, he's just full of it. This guy's lying all the time. Like, is that, does that make the most sense that McGinn just lies about stuff sometimes? I mean, maybe, but... Does that make the most sense? By the way, and and again, listen, I've mentioned this before. There are going to be people, Aaron Rodgers is a person just like everybody else. And for just about every person, with the exception of some people who are loved by everybody and other people who are hated by everybody, most people have a group that like you and appreciate you and others that really don't. But you will hear from some people when you talk about the OTA thing, that want to defend Rodgers, they'll pull out a list of, of people saying, well, look, Randall Cobb said it's not that big of a deal. Well, Tyler Dunn, in this same podcast, as we continue through it, and I skipped through a lot of him just gushing over the information, but said he had a conversation with somebody in, on the Packers roster who was not super happy about it. Oh, by the way, I've talked to one wide receiver, Bob, on this team who said, yeah, it would have been really nice if Aaron was with us in OTAs. This isn't even like an anti-Aaron player. He loves Aaron Rodgers. But said, yeah, that, there's a reason it took a while for this, these receivers that are very young to get on the same page as the quarterback. It took being four and eight before the things finally clicked. So that is another report. I, again, this uh, the fact that nobody cares about this whatsoever is hilarious to me. And I, I, I guess Bob McGinn and Tyler Dunn don't really get the same reach. So maybe it's just going to take a while for this to kind of circulate. Obviously, when Ian says anything, it blows up all over the place. Um, so maybe this will be a little bit of a lag before it really spikes. I just saw a thing by 33rd team put out something. So, you know, maybe it's going to take a while for it to gain traction and blow up. I don't know. But um, again, we're talking about actual inside information now. And, and again, we could say, well, Tyler Dunn's lying. Well, maybe. But I've also seen Tyler Dunn have conversations with a lot of people. I mean, his, the article he wrote that blew him up tremendously that kind of prompted this whole go long thing that turned him into a national treasure was the article he wrote trashing Rogers. And it was based on sources. Some of them were named and he continued. I mean, his, his entire thing over here, go long, uh, com is, is he always does tons of interviews, including with, uh, Green Bay Packers players. So we can pretend that that's fake and maybe it is. I mean, there's no way to, to know that anybody could say, I could say that. And again, it's unfalsifiable. Anyways, then the question is asked, like, okay, because Bob McGinn kind of speculated, like, well, why didn't this get done previously? And he kind of speculates in his own mind about, you know, number one, public opinion, number two, how well he was playing, et cetera, et cetera. But the time is now, whatever. But then he just asked him directly, like, what was the final straw that that ticked everybody off? Uh, I'm not sure about that. Um, just the playoff failures, I would think. I mean, just now this is just from my own, you know, thoughts of having covered pro football, but just the, the play. And again, I do appreciate the fact that when when it's just his own speculation, he speculates. And the, the reason why that's also um, somewhat assuring is because it doesn't really make sense that he's been doing this the whole time. He's been making this up based on his own musings this entire time. Then why did he put the disclaimer on this particular point when he says, I don't know, this is just my guess. Playoff failures. Um, remember what he said on McAfee last month? If I'm playing, I want Mercedes Lewis on my team and Randall Cobb and Alan Lazard and Robert Tunyon. Come on. <laughs> he 
shouldn't be in any position to want those old, re- you know, the retreads like Lewis and Cobb. I mean, come on. These guys are useless on special teams. They're just one-dimensional players. He shouldn't be. I mean, based on the way he played this year, he has no hmm, what word do I want to use? I don't know. He has no currency to be saying stuff like that. Um, and I think they just see this. It's the same scenario with Favre, you know? You got a quarterback who kind of become a became a prima donna in his late years. And it happens with all the adulation that comes from Green Bay fans and NFL fans and the money and the entourage and the sink of fans around the media, national and local. And and you just get sick of it, you know. And then when the play starts to slip and you've got that guy who's been there three years, a first-round pick, drafted. It is amazing, the similarities. I know some people really think there aren't, but it really is. When you, Just hearing him describe it, that's true. you got this guy that – Turn the corner in year three. That's when Aaron Rodgers turned his turn the corner in year three, and it was year four when he took over, which would be the same thing here. You've got a quarterback that's become a diva, same thing. You had, as I said, the team flew out to meet with Aaron Rodgers. The team flew out to meet with uh, Brett Favre. They flew out to his hometown to meet him in his home state. Um, just it, it, the, the, the play started to slip, the play starting to slip. Diva mentality, not showing up for for OTAs and training camp and all that. I mean, it's it is it is I freaking dentical. Kind of down in the same spot. I mean, it's just really deja vu, and they're just ready. He looked pretty good in that game this year, Tyler. I don't even remember which one it was. Eagles. What game Philly. was it? Philly. Yeah, uh, right. it was time. Philadelphia. I mean. <laughs> Garbage time. He gave them a chance to win. And yeah. speaking to his uh, his personal quarterbacks coach, who's really more of a mentor, a family friend, a father figure, Steve Calhoun, he said how Jordan was pissed. I mean, he wanted to win that game. He believed they were going to win that game. And if you rewatch it, six to nine, I don't have it right in front of me, maybe a buck 15, but two of those three incompletions were bad drops. You know, a dart to Aaron Jones up the right sideline, uh, Randall Cobb in the end zone who – shouldn't be on the roster, but is because Aaron asked him to be on the roster. Uh, he was lights out in that game. He was really lights out in the preseason. I know you're going to, people can look at his numbers and say he played poorly. If you watch those exhibition games, Bob, man, he was good. I mean, some of the throws he was making outside of the pocket, twisting his hips around, throwing them across his body. Um, they were just drops galore in those games. So yeah, he's, you know, while while Aaron was skipping OTAs, he was there working with these young receivers. I think a lot of this young core, they love Jordan Love. So again, one of the things I appreciate for both of them is when they don't know, they say, I think. That was an I think. McGinn mentioned, I think, a lot in that. Which leads me to believe that there are things that they think and things that they know. The other thing that I thought was funny about those particular comments, when you really think about it, and I, I somewhat disagree, I, I thought... Love was good and bad. He has very up and down in the off season. And, and again, my whole thing with quarterbacks is consistency. If you're great 70% of the time, that's cool. But if you're a disaster 30% of the time, you suck as a quarterback. That's just the way it is. So I'm not entirely convinced, although I am excited with the upside, because again, everything he described is absolutely true. But anyways, the, the, Anyways, then he goes on to further discredit his own. And and again, there's a difference between what he's hearing, which may be just as useless, and his own thought process, which seems completely devoid of any thought. But he goes on to explain why Rodgers isn't a first ballot Hall of Famer, because Brian Greasy wasn't. Brian Greasy. He's like, yeah, it took him like 12 years to get in. Yeah, it's because he's Brian freaking Greasy, bro. The guy had two years in his entire career where he threw more than 3,000 yards. He had one season ever where he threw more than 20 touchdowns and he threw 19 interceptions that year. What does Brian Greasy have anything to do with Aaron Rodgers? He made the Pro Bowl, I think, once ever. Pro Bowl. I didn't say MVP. I said Pro Bowl. Uh, You know, uh, he's going through this list of guys that Rodgers apparently is just a part of and actually says the sentence, people say that Rodgers is a first ballot Hall of Famer. 
why it took Brian Greasy 12 years. Dude, Brian Greasy shouldn't be in the Hall of Fame. The only thing I could think is he's using Super Bowls as his metric because he won a Super Bowl once. And Rodgers won a Super Bowl once, so they're all in the same tier, which would be the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. Then he, then, then he has an argument with himself. He's like, well, he won four MVPs. You know what? The MVP is a regular season award. Who gives a crap? Again, he's, he's obviously just obsessed with Super Bowl. Well, you only have one Super Bowl. Dude, four MVPs? What does MVP mean? You were the best player in the entire league. And that happened four times in your career? And you're going to put him in the same category as Brian Greasy because you're pissed off? You're an angry, bitter Packer fan who's mad because Rodgers didn't get you more Super Bowls? And so you're going to disregard the fact that he has four MVPs? This is the dumbest conversation ever. You know, it almost feels like Bob McGinn is captain of the the Mr. Negative crowd. You know, those angry fans that are mad at Gutekunst for not getting T. Higgins, that are still mad about T.J. Watt, that refuse to acknowledge anything good that's ever happened, that love to say that Super Bowls are the only thing that matter. No matter what happens, they're never happy unless the Packers win a Super Bowl every year and never miss on a draft pick. I think Bob McGinn is captain of that fan club. He is captain of the negative fan fan club. And actually, several. I think uh, Silverstein, he's, he's probably like the, uh, the treasurer of that club. Something like that. I don't listen to that podcast, but every time I do, he's just... <laughs> it's a little more mopey, you know? McGinn's a little more pointed. Freaking bunch of... Silverstein's just... Eh, I don't know. They suck. I don't know. Okay, well, whatever. This is... This, this is Again, if, my, if Bob McGinn, and, and listen, I already know he's, he's one of the most reliable guys when it comes to the NFL draft. He is a legend in the NFL draft community, believe it or not. You go and ask around, and it's like one of the most accurate draft people, and it's because he's plugged in, because he has contacts with teams and stuff, because he's a very respected reporter over the years. The argument from a lot of people, I think especially Packer fans, is that he's a low-life loser because they don't like that he's negative about the team generally and about Aaron Rodgers specifically, according to some people that like Rodgers, depending on your opinion of that. I'm actually surprised that he doesn't have more support because he's trashing Rodgers, but that just goes to show how much he's disliked among Packer fans. But, but my only question is, I don't care if the guy doesn't know how to think. If he can't tie his shoelaces, that's a separate issue. The question is, does he still have sources? And are the sources giving reliable information? That's the only thing that matters. Because at that point, you just need to be a reporter. You don't need to be a thinker. You know, you don't need to know how to reason things out or figure things out. That's the great thing about being a reporter. You're just a parrot. Somebody says something, you write it down. And then you tell me about it. And that's it. It's all I need you to do. We know Bob McGinn can't think very well, clearly. I didn't know that until today when he tried to compare Aaron Rodgers to Bob uh, Brian Greasy. But now I know. Not a big thinker. But I tend to think he's still pretty plugged in. Again, because he's still killing it with the draft. Now, maybe he killed all his contacts within Green Bay. I don't know. I doubt it. But then there's a further question of, is he injecting his own bias into this? Did somebody say, yeah, they're kind of sick of this guy. They're sick of his attitude. And he's taken that to the next extreme of, therefore, I think they're going to just burn this guy with fire. And in reality, they're sick of him, but they're putting up with him for various reasons. I, have, I don't know. I don't, again, this is the weirdest thing ever. If you want to see me go crazy, watch me sit down here and talk to myself trying to reason through this. Well, he kind of, yeah, but he, I don't know, but he's kind of, yeah, but he, uh, uh. Anyways, while I babble to myself for a little bit, why don't we go ahead and take a break? Patreon.com forward slash pack underscore daddy is where you can support this very podcast so I can continue to talk to myself for your entertainment. Also, please consider checking out Fertile Ground Ranch Discipleship Ministry at FertileGroundRanch.org. See if it is something you'd be interested in supporting. We're going to take a break and we'll be right back with some more crazy news. Hey, U.S. Cellular customers, I've got good news, so don't hit skip forward just yet. I'm talking about their special customer event, us days. What's us days? It means exclusive offers just for their customers, just to say thanks, like up to $1,200 to upgrade to any new phone. No, I didn't just misread that. That's up to $1,200 off. They must really like you. Us days at US Cellular, exclusive offers just for you, just to say thanks. Right now, US Cellular customers get up to $1,200 to upgrade to any new phone. Terms apply. Why take one vacation with the family when you could take all of them? With Royal Caribbean, you don't just go to the beach. You visit a private island and race down the tallest water slide in North America. You don't just go for a road trip. You ATV and zip line through the jungle. 
You don't just go somewhere new. You rappel down waterfalls and discover ancient temples. Because this isn't just any vacation. This is all the vacations. Come seek the Royal Caribbean. Ships Registry, Bahamas. Hey, it's Kaylee Cuoco for Priceline. Ready to go to your happy place for a happy price? Well, why didn't you say so? Just download the Priceline app right now and save up to 60% on hotels. So whether it's Cousin Kevin's Kazoo concert in Kansas City, go Kevin! Or Becky's Bachelorette Bash in Bermuda. You never have to miss a trip ever again. So download the Priceline app today. Your savings are waiting. Go to your happy place for a happy price. Go to your happy price, Priceline. This episode is brought to you by Bumble. So you want to find someone you're compatible with, specifically someone who's ready for a serious connection, totally open to having kids in the future, is a tall rock climbing Libra, and loves rom-coms with vegan pizzas on Tuesdays just as much as you do. Bumble knows that you know exactly what's right for you. So whatever it is you're looking for, Bumble's features can help you find it. Date now on Bumble. So on the heels of Bob McGinn dropping this massive bomb that the organization doesn't like uh, Rodgers, and everybody's speculating in circles. And and by the way, as many people have pointed out, Bob McGinn is clearly very connected. Now, again, there's a lot of nuance here and things that I don't know. I can't, none of us can see behind the curtain. That's the thing. All this stuff has a big curtain, and we just can't see behind it. We're trying to parse it all out. He's very well connected. But some people might tell you he's burned all his bridges in Green Bay. So ironically... It's entirely possible that he is a Green Bay, former Green Bay Packers reporter or whatever, that is extremely connected around the league because he spent a lot of time and is extremely respected and everything else. But in Green Bay, he's not very well liked. That's possible. It's also possible that despite that, he has one or two connections left, blah, blah, blah. I don't know. It doesn't matter. The point is, he's a connected guy, right? I was actually surprised to find out. First of all, I was shocked to find out he's one of the best draft guys out there. Even today, if you look on these, uh, I forget what the site's called, but they sort of aggregate... um, how how accurate your your mocks were, et cetera, et cetera, and how accurate your big boards were and all that kind of stuff. Uh, Bob McGinn has been at the top of that list for quite a while. And I was like, Bob McGinn, like the Packer guy? How is he a draft guy too? It's because he's very connected. The other thing is when he was making all his comments in the past, I was shocked to find the national media, guys like uh, Colin Coward and everything else, talking glowingly about his record as a reporter. Everybody knows the guy. Doesn't mean he's right. I just want to set the record straight. He's not just some random kook who used to write for the Packers a long time ago and has since lost his mind. Just throwing that out there. Anyways, on the heels of all that, Tom Silverstein writes an article. If Aaron Rodgers isn't with the Green Bay Packers next season, here are five likely trade partners. So it's a, I saw the article. I didn't even think about reading it uh, in terms of in depth. I mean, I kind of scrolled through what the teams were and everything. I'm like, all right, I'll get back to that in a minute. And then I see... uh, Aaron Nagler puts a tweet up with a little quote from said article that I already opened and skimmed. It was like, okay, nice. I'll save that for later. And I should have just read the first paragraph. Ready? I'm going to read it to you. This is uh, Tom Silverstein, 558. Green Bay. At one point last year, Green Bay Packers general manager Brian Gutekunst told an NFL colleague He was convinced it was time the organization move on from quarterback Aaron Rodgers and see what Jordan Love had in him. Whether Gutekunst was frustrated over the team's mounting losses, realized that Rodgers wanted to start a new chapter in his life, or believed it was Love's time to take over the team isn't clear. But the colleague was certain Gutekunst had given a lot of thought to what the team would look like without Aaron Rodgers. Whatever Gutekunst and Rodgers discussed immediately after the season— uh, and will discuss should Rodgers decide he wants to play next season will be paramount to whatever Gutekunst was thinking that day. The emotion of blowing chance to make the emotion of blowing a chance to make the playoffs in the regular season finale and the bitter taste of an eight and nine season should be removed by then. Continues later on, Rodgers has entertained discussions about playing for another team on his weekly appearance on the Pat McAfee show, saying he didn't want to be a part of a rebuild and would understand if the Packers decided they wanted to let the younger love become the featured player. So, (laughs) amazingly, Silverstein either just found this out or has been sitting on this for a long time and just kind of drops it in the middle of an article about, here are some options for the Packers in an era. Like, whoa, 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 slow down. What was that first thing again? Like, it could be the Raiders, it could be the Panthers, it could be the... No, 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 I I, like, okay, we'll get to that in a minute here, uh, Timothy. Um, 
could we rewind a little bit and go back to roughly the very first sentence of the article? Could be the Titan. Their offensive coordinator is Tim Kelly. They have a connection with Chad Brinker. Are you hearing what I'm saying? First sentence, Thomas. I also think the Seahawks are an option. Hey, uh, I don't, I don't care what you think. I wanted, I want to know about that first thing. Don't get me wrong. He's got all this stuff laid out and whatnot. It's worth reading, I suppose. But um, very interested in that first part. Obviously, we're not going to find out who he had talked to or how it got back to Tom. Can I just say this? Can we get into conspiracy theory land for just a second? Is it weird to anybody else that like the day Rogers goes into his darkness retreat, the day of, we have two massive bombs, both of which say the Packers don't like Rogers and they want out. Now, I don't know that guys like Tom or uh, McGinn would do this. I think they would. If you've got like two of the most establishment guys, and I don't mean like biased or anything necessarily, but entrenched, it has to be those two guys, right? Maybe uh, Domofsky, right? Maybe, I don't know. McGinn, for sure. He's like number one on the list. Silverstein might be number two. I don't know. Now, Silverstein is extremely critical, but the point is, let me just ask, if the Packers wanted to slip some information to these guys, could they very easily, I mean, think about it. They both just suddenly got information from a source, just randomly. Bob McGinn just found out that everybody hates Rodgers, and Tom Silverstein just found out from some guy that, hey, like I overheard Gutekunst say something to this guy. Could you like slip that into an article? And so Rodgers is going to emerge to all this negative news saying the Packers want him out. Like, where, where is this coming from? All these months, we went the entire season, and nobody mentioned this? And, and listen, if I'm Tom Silverstein and I overheard this at the Senior Bowl, I'm not leaving, I'm not going to bed that night without writing an article about it. He just found out today or has he just been sitting on this and released it the exact same day and maybe he saw the bob mcginn thing is like fine screw you i got info too bro like you think i don't know i know stuff and it said late last year gutekunst made the comments so this is not something that was said at the senior bowl an nfl colleague so so this is two sources now saying that they're convinced it's jordan loves time which means if nothing else Jordan Love's getting that fifth-year option. Like, that's, that's done. I just, I'm so, I'm so confused. I hate to be that guy because I generally don't buy it, but this just seems too perfect, doesn't it? You've got a source slipping info to two guys, like just kind of last minute, just going to slide it in there. Like the day he goes into his darkness retreat. By the way, as I've been pondering this here, um, when I've got myself a cup of coffee to think about this, what makes the most sense? Rodgers leaked it, the Packers leaked it, or another team leaked it? Because remember, they're just hearing about, hey, Gutekunst told me this that one time. Remember the, the wording here. At one point late last year, Green Bay Packers general manager told an NFL colleague. That doesn't necessarily say anybody within the Green Bay Packers organization. So this could be somebody outside of Green Bay who's leaking this information. If I had to rank what makes the most sense, Number one is this is other teams or an other team leaking the information. Number two would be the Packers. Number three would be Rodgers. Because if you're looking at it from the standpoint of who benefits, the Packers and Rodgers would only do this, and this has been speculated a lot and it's entirely possible, that they're both looking for a break, but nobody wants to be the one to say it. So from Rodgers' standpoint, he doesn't want to, he doesn't want to play for the Packers. He doesn't want to retire. He doesn't want to be the bad guy. So he slips off into this darkness retreat and it becomes like this whole conspiracy theory. You know, you, you plan somebody's murder or something, but you just happen to be on a vacation. Like, I don't know. I was five countries away. It couldn't have been me. So Rogers goes into his hiding closet and is like, how could I possibly leak this? I had no phone. I had no technology. I couldn't have done it. All the while he set it up and he did it so that he can come out and say, you know what? You bunch of jerks. I saw the reports. How dare you? I'm not putting up with this garbage. I will not be treated this way, et cetera, et cetera. So there's that. The problem, the biggest problem is, number one, I don't necessarily think he wants to leave. I think he wants to be respected. I think he wants to be wanted in Green Bay. Maybe not. I don't know. Number two, I think he has the hardest path to make this work. 
at best, he could collude with another team because this has to be an NFL source. And it really would be weird for Rodgers to contact, you know, let's say assistant trainer for the New York Jets and just be like, hey, man, um, would you mind talking to like Tom Silverstein from Green Bay and tell him that you heard this, that or the other? And then what? He like tries to bump into him or something or sends him an email like, hey, I got this juicy detail. You know what I mean? Like it's it's tricky. The Packers are much easier because the Packers have people and all they got to do is talk to them and just be like, hey, man, you know, it's crazy. Freaking uh, what you, what you gonna call it? You know, the, the, it makes sense that they would be in contact with each other. These guys are calling them 24 seven. They're talking to them. They're interacting with them, blah, blah, blah. So you could make it slip from the Green Bay standpoint. The, the problem I have with that is, well, although it's possible, it's the dumbest freaking thing ever. Like <laughs> the complete lack of a backbone to just say to the guy, look, it's, it's time to move on rather than going this roundabout kind of way. But from the other, I, I think it honestly makes the most sense. Let's just say the Jets. They're absolutely desperate. They're freaking ruthless. They'll do anything they can to make sure that when Rodgers emerges, his decision is painfully obvious he wants out. And uh, he wants to get back at this team that did him wrong, right? They're trying to get him pissed off at the Packers. Why would the Packers want him ticked? And, wanna, and, and by the way, this doesn't put the Packers in a good light. But they start leaking this stuff. Especially maybe they start using the local reporters because maybe it's a little easier to kind of get this message out. Whereas maybe somebody like Ian Rappaport would be a little bit more skeptical. I know that seems unlikely, but maybe. Maybe it seems more reliable. Maybe they just have an easier access to these guys. I don't know. And that's the other thing. That that kind of makes it feel more like the Packers now that I'm thinking about it. Because if it was the Jets, it would be easier for them to get to guys like Ian Rappaport and Adam Schefter. The Packers are the ones that have a direct pipeline to these guys. See, I'm going in circles now. I don't know. I think it would benefit the other teams the most. But the fact that it's not Ian saying that he overheard it, although that makes it seem like it's the Packers if you go to these guys, huh? Think about it. And I know for a fact, Bob McGinn's a national guy. I mean, he's, he's a Packer guy, but he's, he's, got, he's connected all around the NFL. Silverstein, I don't know. But it makes it feel like it's the Packers because he talked to these two guys. I don't know. I don't know, man. All I can say is, quite honestly, I hope that it's true. Not necessarily that I, I hope that Gutekunst freaking hates Rogers' guts and they all just can't stand it. But, but let, let me just play devil's advocate here for why that's a good thing. The Packers suck, right? And it's a problem. And if what the actual situation is, is that Rogers is lazy and toxic and he has an attitude and all this stuff, He's not working hard. Also, Jordan Love is Rogers 2.0. He's ready to rock and roll. He looks like a freak. I'm sorry. That's great news. I mean, I don't want to find out Rogers is a bad dude or anything like that. You know, I hate to have two heroes go down in flames. But for the benefit of the team, if you're saying Rogers is the problem and you cut him out like a cancer, the team gets better addition by subtraction, which is a thing. Then you add in a quarterback who is better and wants it and works hard. Plus, we're getting rid of all these guys that they didn't really want, blah, 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 blah. Bottom line is, it ends up being a positive thing. I don't know that I buy it. Doesn't make a ton of sense. It's super fishy for a lot of reasons. But I think, I think, I don't know, change my mind every five seconds, I think we should want this to be true. Because it means they've identified the solution, and they can fix it. If it's not true, they haven't identified Jack, and we're back to square one. And it means that last year was the best we could do. We have no idea about Jordan Love or whether he's capable of doing anything. And here we sit. So I'm going to go back to Twitter and hit refresh to find out what, who's next. Rob Domofsky has a report that Gutekunst put up pictures of Roger's face in the urinals or something, you know? I don't know. We'll see. I'm sure it's coming. But the bottom line is, like, things are certainly starting to build, right? And how this all materializes, I don't know. It's certainly pushing in one direction, right? There's a lot of momentum trying to push this apart. And it, it, it really depends where is this all coming from, right? If this genuinely is from the Packers, it seems hard to believe that they're going to let him come back, right? In other words, <laughs> like, hey, uh, so you saw all those reports, huh? That's pretty crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I still want to come back, though. I'm sure you guys didn't say it. Like, yeah, <laughs> look, why don't, you, why don't you think about that a little bit harder, okay? No, I, I'd, I'd like to come play. You said I could come back and play, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, that's what we said. It is what we said. So can I 
can I come back and play then as your quarterback? Because you guys said I was great and nothing's wrong and all that. Yeah, look, um, those reports said we hated you, right? Pretty crazy that it said that. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I just, I don't, I don't understand. I don't understand. I'm just trying to reconcile. On one hand, everybody freaking hates the, the guy. On the other hand, they refuse to say a single bad word about him. So in front of the cameras, they will throw everybody else under the bus to protect Aaron Rodgers. Everything he does is great. He never makes any mistakes. Behind the scenes, they can't freaking stand the guy. They talk trash about him, and then they leak that information. Dude, why don't you just go tell them? Why, why do you need to, like, this is like, I don't know, elementary school, middle school stuff, where it's like, hey, go, go tell her I hate her. Send this note. Give her this note. Tell her it's from me. And then I'm going to sit here and pretend that I'm we're best friends. Like, hey, friend, how are you? Did you get the note? It's weird, right? <laughs> like, what? I don't get it. That's why I struggle with it being real. And again, I don't know what their conversations were. It's entirely possible, again, that what Rodgers is contemplating is whether he wants to be traded or retire. In other words, he already knows the Packers don't want him. They've already discussed it. They've said, look, we're moving in a new direction. We want to go with Jordan Love. And he's like, all right, cool. Let me decide if I want to you know, retire or be traded. That's, maybe that's already a thing. I, I don't know. All I know is this is so freaking weird, and I can't figure it out. Can anybody point to any time in the last 365 days that Gutekunst or Lafleur or Murphy has said a single bad word about Rodgers ever? Even in, they, they won't even say his play has declined. They've been asked point blank by these reporters. Can, but can you at least admit that his play has declined? Like, they're begging. Please say one bad thing about Rodgers, and they won't. They won't do it. And now I'm supposed to believe this is coming from an organization that hates his freaking guts? Again, there is always the conspiracy about, well, we didn't want to tank his trade value, but what are we doing right now? We're going to leak this so everybody knows we hate him, so our trade... This is why it just, it feels like it's coming from somewhere else. It doesn't make sense. It pushes them apart and theoretically pushes the value down by, by giving the impression that the Packers aren't going to keep him anyways. So the cost should not be very high. We're deflating the cost. At least that's the theory. Whether or not that happens or not, I don't know. But it, it just, I just don't freaking get it, man. And again, the, the, the question from before, Brian Gutekunz got in front of the uh, press and, and everybody watching and said, we are going to put in the quarterback that gives us the best chance to win. And now what's being leaked essentially is the belief that Jordan Love is probably the best option and they chose not to do it anyways. So he just flat out lied, which, I mean, you know, he's not Jesus, so I guess I shouldn't hold him to that standard. He's, he's allowed to, but, you know, generally they just give some kind of coach speak. They don't just flat out lie and be like, oh, no, Rodgers is clearly the guy that's going to help us win. He is the back-to-back -back MVP. He's blah, 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 blah. And yet you didn't believe it? Like, I don't, I, don't, I don't know what's going on, man. I have no freaking idea. I'm just excited to find out on Tuesday if uh, he's probably not going to be on Pat McAfee. I just want to hear what's going through Rodgers' head. Doesn't mean it's real. I'm just curious how this is going to manifest itself. Like, is he just going to come out freaking pissed and ready to fight and ready to just like, because that's what happened before. And again, this is why this would actually make sense if either the Packers or another team did it. Because remember, there were all these reports before and they were all fake from Ian and all that. Not, not fake. It's unfair to say it's fake. They were just giving their opinion and then everybody spun it out of control. But Rodgers got wind of it. And what do you say? Well, apparently they're talking to other teams, which is interesting. He got all pissy about it even though nothing was going on. So now, because he's got some little minions that monitor social media and report back to Aaron Rodgers, they're going to report all this stuff back to Rodgers and what's going to happen. I'm assuming he's going to get a little ticked off. But I don't know. Maybe he's going to go on Pat McAfee and say, it's all BS. This is all fake. This is nonsense. We have a great relationship. Everything's fine. I don't know. I'm just spinning in circles and I just want a resolution. I want somebody to speak. I want Gutekunst or Lafleur or Murphy or Rodgers to say something. They're not going to but I desperately would like it at this point. Anyways, I just want to end on this note. I'm sure all of you that are actually listening to this podcast have a at least decent grasp of where I stand on these things. Maybe not because I'm kind of all over the place, but I'm already seeing the narrative emerge on social media. Um, when I ask questions, it's out of general curiosity, um, but everybody assumes it's bias. So the funny thing is I spent a lot of time crafting the initial tweet about Bob McGinn 
because I, I didn't, when it was initially said, it would have ticked off half the people because everything's split into two teams always. The way I crafted it now, it kind of appeals to everybody. But the problem with that is everybody can see it from the opposite point of view too. In other words, if you're straddling the fence, people on the right will accuse you of being on the left. People on the left will accuse you of being on the right, right? I don't mean in political terms. I'm just speaking in generalities. So people start to build narratives about what you think. So apparently some people think that I'm saying this because I don't want it to be true, right? It's fake. It can't be real. Dude, I don't freaking care. I just want to know, right? I hope the people that are listening to this at this point understand that that is always my perspective. I just want to know what's going on. Everything's a freaking puzzle to me and I'm going to figure it out. I don't care. And again, I, I kind of think I do want it to be true. But just to be very, very clear, I'm not saying that this is made up because I think that they're madly in love and he's going to stay forever because I just can't imagine a life without Rodgers. If you think that that's why I'm saying this stuff, it's very obvious you do not listen to this podcast. I'm not trying to discredit Silverstein or McGinn. I'm sure they heard something and it may be entirely legit. I'm just asking a question. Why is this information just coming out now? On the exact same day, at the exact same time, Rodgers goes into seclusion and is about to get closer to making a decision. A comment that was made last year? And again, is kind of a, a secluded guy. He doesn't come out enough. But Silverstein, I mean, there's podcasts. There's all this stuff. He just got this information at the exact same time. I mean, maybe. Could just be a coincidence. Or as somebody else said, maybe McGinn dropped the bomb and Silverstein's like, oh, I'm not letting you take all the thunder. I'm going to drop what I know too. I don't know why he would have been sitting on it. I'm just trying to get to the bottom of what the heck is going on because this is weird. We've been spending weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks of no information whatsoever and people running wild with just speculation and me saying there's no information, nobody has any information and suddenly two big bombs of actual insider information that Gutekunst has flat out said he doesn't want Rodgers and that he wants love and McGinn says these guys freaking hate Rodgers and they love love and think that he's elite. I'm sorry, if you knew that information, why would you wait? That's massive news, tell me. And I think the reason they didn't is because they just found out at the same time, magically, from NFL sources. I don't know, man. Again, I'm just following the Rogers formula. Take the information and think what makes the most sense. None of this makes any sense, but I'm doing my best here, all right? By the way, 608-501-0718 608-501-0718 is the phone number to call. Very sorry about last night. I don't, I, it was done. It was ready to go and I just didn't schedule it. So yesterday's will be posted tonight and then I'll blah, 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 blah. Maybe we'll do a double thing. I don't know. My apologies. I'm, I'm really slacking here, but uh, call in and uh, let me know your thoughts about what's going on. Cause maybe there's, maybe there's just a very obvious thing sitting there that I'm just not seeing. I don't know, but this is very, strange and and somewhat uncharted territory and some people say no it's not we go through this every year i think this is different this is this is i mean again this is very specific and if rogers does come back and play what the heck does that mean you know what i mean like <laughs> i'm gonna need some answers from again and silverstein about who told you this and and what the heck's going on anyways guys i'm just spinning my wheels here so i think i'm just gonna i'm just, I'm just gonna leave it at that let it marinate um We'll do some Packernet after dark. You can reach out, by the way, because it'll probably take me a while to get to those calls. So reach out on Twitter or wherever you want to get a hold of me if you have any thoughts. You can also text. I don't usually read the text messages on there, but if I think of it, I'll check the text messages just to kind of get some of your thoughts and insights. Same same number, 608-501-0718. Um, but I'll leave it at that. You guys have yourselves a great day. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye.